Welcome to Unit 15, Video 1, Equilibrium. By the end of this video, you should understand what it means for a system to be at equilibrium. You should be able to determine the equilibrium constant for an equilibrium system. And you should be able to interpret the meaning of an equilibrium constant. Prior to now, we've only been looking at reactions that go in the forward direction. In other words, reactions that go until the reactant runs out. However, this isn't always the case. Many reactions are reversible reactions. These are reactions in which the products can regenerate the original reactants. For example, given this reaction here, 2 moles of NO2 yielding 1 mole of N2O4, this reaction is reversible, meaning it can also run in the opposite direction. 1 mole of N2O4 can break down to form 2 moles of NO2. Equilibrium refers to the state of a system when there is an exact balancing of two processes which are opposite of each other. In other words, the rate of the forward process is equal to the rate of the reverse process. Because the rates of these opposite processes are equal, there will be no net change to the system, even though both processes are still occurring. Consider the population of New York, for example. If the rate of people moving out is equal to the rate of people moving in, we'll always have a constant population. However, both the moving out and moving in processes will still be going on, but their rates are equal, so there's no net change to the population. To take another local example, here we have Staten Island and here we have Brooklyn. As you probably know, the Verrazano Bridge connects Staten Island and Brooklyn. Imagine that one morning there are 24 cars in Staten Island and 37 cars in Brooklyn. If the rate of people driving over the bridge from Staten Island to Brooklyn is equal to the rate of people driving over the bridge from Brooklyn to Staten Island, we will be at equilibrium. We'll always have the same number of people or the same number of cars in Staten Island and in Brooklyn, but they won't be the same cars because cars will be going consistently over the bridge. The rate of people going from Staten Island to Brooklyn is equal to the rate of people going from Brooklyn to Staten Island. Chemical equilibrium is the state of a system where all the concentrations of the reactants and the products are constant and the rate at which they form is equal to the rate at which they are consumed. So again, we have constant concentrations and equal rates. This is a dynamic system. It's not static. In other words, both the forward and the reverse process are still happening. We just don't see any overall net change. It's important to note that the equal in equilibrium refers to the rate, but not necessarily the amount. It doesn't matter if the amounts of reactants and products are equal. They might be, but that would just be coincidental. What's important is that the rates are equal. Any reaction in a closed container will eventually establish equilibrium. And equilibrium can occur for both physical and chemical processes. Take this example of a physical equilibrium system that we've seen before. The first picture shows a liquid placed in a closed flask. As soon as the flask is closed, some of the liquid will begin to evaporate. After a while, there will be a goodish amount of particles in the vapor phase. This means that some of the vapor particles can begin to recondense. Eventually, the rate at which particles are evaporating will become equal to the rate at which particles are recondensing, meaning that we'll be at equilibrium. Once this point is reached, the liquid level will remain constant because the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. Looking now at a chemical example, we see when we first put N2O4 gas in a container, it will begin to break down to form some NO2 gas. Notice this equation is not balanced. After a while, some of this NO2 gas will start to react to again form N2O4. When the rate of the forward reaction, N2O4 to NO2, is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, NO2 to N2O4, we'll be at equilibrium. Here, a sign that we're at equilibrium will be the constant color of the container. Since NO2 is a brown gas, since we'll have a constant amount of NO2 at equilibrium, we'll have a constant brown color. In terms of notation, we use a double arrow to indicate that a reaction occurs in both directions, or that a reaction is at equilibrium. The proper way to draw this arrow is like this, but since that's a difficult symbol to type, I just usually use this double-headed arrow. But when you're drawing it in your notebook, you should draw it like this. 
Let's take another look at an example. This reaction tells us that one mole of H2O plus one mole of CO will yield one mole of H2 and one mole of CO2. That's the forward reaction. But notice, because of the arrow, we see that this reaction establishes equilibrium, because it eventually the rate of the forward reaction will equal the rate of the reverse reaction. Take a look at this particle diagram. Notice the amounts of each particle are listed in the table below. Pause the video here and try to decide where the reaction reaches equilibrium. If you said these two flasks, you're correct. Notice that at that point, the amount of reactant and product is constant, meaning the rate at which reactants are forming products is equal to the rate at which products are breaking down to form reactants. Looking at this same information graphically, here we see a graph of reaction rate of the forward and the reverse reaction. The rate of the forward reaction is represented in blue, and the rate of the reverse reaction is represented in pink. Notice that initially, the rate of the forward reaction is very high, and the rate of the reverse reaction is very low. This makes sense since there can't be any reverse reaction until a good amount of forward reaction has occurred. Eventually, however, the rate of the forward reaction will begin to, begin to slow down as more reactant is converted to product, and the rate of the reverse reaction will begin to pick up since there will be more product to reconvert to um, reactant. Eventually, these two rates will converge and will be at equilibrium. Looking now at a graph of concentration of reactants and products, we see that in each case here, we begin with a high concentration of reactant and a low concentration of product. This is reasonable since at the start of the reaction, there's no product yet formed. But as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of reactant will decrease and product will increase until they become constant when we reach equilibrium, the point at which the rate of formation of products is equal to the rate of breakdown of products back into reactant. We can quantify the state of a system at equilibrium using something called the equilibrium constant. Before we do that, it's important to differentiate between two ideas, though. First, the equilibrium position. This is the set of concentrations at equilibrium. In other words, all of the concentrations of the reactants and the products when the system is at equilibrium. The equilibrium expression, on the other hand, is the concentration of products at equilibrium raised to their coefficients over the concentration of reactants at equilibrium raised to their coefficients. When writing an equilibrium expression, which we'll do in a second, it's important to know that we only include gases and aqueous solutions. We do not include solids, because notice the equilibrium expression deals with concentrations, and solids don't have a variable concentration. Therefore, we only include gases and aqueous solutions. Take this example. Here, the small letters A, B, C, and D represent coefficients, and the big capital letters A, B, C, and D represent reactants and products. The equilibrium expression, then, here will be KEQ, which means equilibrium constant, is equal to the concentration of C raised to the power of its coefficient, times the concentration of D raised to the power of its coefficient, divided by the concentration of A raised to its coefficient, divided, uh, times the concentration of B raised to its coefficient. Notice we have products over reactants, each raised to their coefficients. Also recall that the brackets refer to concentration. The equilibrium constant, or K, is the value obtained when you solve the equilibrium expression. So if we plug in concentrations for C, D, A, and B and solve, we'll get our equilibrium constant. This is generally unitless. It could have a unit, we just usually omit it because the unit is meaningless. Notice this is a big K. This is different than the little Ks in rate laws. It's easy to get confused. Equilibrium is capital K, Rate laws have a small k. Let's look at this example together. This is the reaction we saw before. I'm going to start by writing our equilibrium expression. Our equilibrium expression will be KEQ is equal to the concentration of our products, N2O4, raised to their coefficient, which in this case is 1. You can choose to write that or not, divided by the concentration of our reactants, NO2, 
raised to its coefficient of 2. Now I can use my equilibrium expression to solve for my k value. Again, my products have a concentration of 0 0.00140 raised to the power of 1 divided by my reactants, which have a concentration of 0 0.0172 raised to the power of 2. Solve for my KEQ and I get 4.73 as my equilibrium constant. Here's an example to try on your own. Pause the video here and write the equilibrium expression and calculate the equilibrium constant. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. When thinking about the difference between the equilibrium constant and the equilibrium position, take a look at this data. Here we have three separate experiments, each with different initial concentrations of reactants and products. Notice that in the first two trials, we start with zero product, but a significant concentration of reactant, whereas in the third trial, we start with zero reactant, but a concentration of product. Notice that it doesn't matter, then, which we start with. Equilibrium will still be established. Take a second to think through the problem at the bottom. Which depends on initial concentrations, the equilibrium constant or the equilibrium position? If you said the equilibrium constant, you're correct. Notice that no matter what the initial conditions are, we establish the same equilibrium constant. However, the equilibrium position, the set of concentrations at equilibrium, will be different. In other words, it's important to realize that the constant does not depend on our starting point, but our equilibrium position does. Finally, let's look at what the value of k means. Since K is equal to the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants raised to their coefficients, it essentially gives us a form of a ratio between concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium. For example, if K is much larger than 1, that means the reaction is product favored. In other words, at equilibrium, there's a large concentration of product and a very small concentration of reactant. This should make sense since our equilibrium constant puts concentration of products over reactants. So if our numerator, our products, is large and our denominator is small, we'll get a value greater than 1. On the other hand, if K is less than 1, then the reaction is reactant favored, meaning that there's more reactant than product at equilibrium. Here, our denominator, our concentration of reactant, is much larger than our numerator giving us a value of less than 1. Another way of thinking about this is to say that the larger the k value, the more the equilibrium position favors the products. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at what it means for a system to be at equilibrium. The rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, and the concentrations of reactants and products are constant. Then, we learned how to determine the equilibrium constant for an equilibrium system, and we looked at the meaning of the equilibrium constant. Large equilibrium constants means products predominate at equilibrium, and small equilibrium constants means uh, that the reactants dominate at equilibrium.